the responsibilities of the position I feel, but accept them without fear. The office has come to me unsought. I bring to it a conscientious desire and determination to fill it to the best of my ability, to the satisfaction of the people. Ulysses S. Grant, March 4th, 1869. Robert E. Lee's surrender at Appomattox meant the Civil War was finally over. The Union had won, and Ulysses S. Grant was his hero. Now America faced a new test. The South was decimated, its economy and morale shattered. The armed conflict was over, but the struggle for reunification and lasting peace was just beginning. I think General Grant which he was a four-star general at the time of his nomination, uh, inherited uh, a very volatile America. He had an America that was whole again, but it wasn't united. It was a country in which there was a plan for reconstruction, but that plan had been a disaster. Would you have taken the job? If that was a job description, no thank you. In a letter to William Tecumseh Sherman, Grant wrote, I have been forced into it in spite of myself. I could not back down without leaving the contest for power for the next four years between mere trading politicians, the elevation of whom, no matter which party won, would lose to us largely the results of the costly war which we have gone through. Grant was going to be stalwart in trying to create this unique biracial society. He was serious about being a civil rights president. That is why Let Us Have Peace became his campaign slogan. Let Us Have Peace is symbolic of his resilience and his determination. Great slogan and meaningful too, not some hyperbole. He wanted to see the legacy of the Civil War ripen that is, in reconciliation, rapprochement, and to be sure that the freedmen receive their civil liberties and civil rights. President Grant knew keeping the peace would not be easy. Southern resistance lingered and had to be confronted. Grant was a military man, and he thought like a military man, disciplined, focused. I think his greatest success as president was his enforcement of Reconstruction, the Civil Rights Act of 1866, the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments, his support of the 1870 and 71 Enforcement Acts, called the Anti-Ku Klux Klan Acts. Despite his best intentions, his administration was not immune to scandal. This was a time of, of great, uncontrolled economic growth. Sometimes this age can be described as the Gilded Age, and all that glitters with gold, but inside it's corrupt. And I think that has been applied to Grant in terms of some of the scandals of his administration. He was never implicated in any of the scandals. And th that says a lot, because I think the people basically believed that this was their man who was not going to be a coward and was going to stand up for what he believed. I think Ulysses S. Grant should be remembered as a great patriot whose heart and soul was in the protection of America and its values, as well as being all-inclusive. African Americans, immigrants, and past enemies, Confederates, should all be included in the American dream. I have acted in every instance from a conscientious desire to do what was right, constitutional, within the law, and for the very best interest of the whole people. Failures have been errors of judgment, not of intent.